Dialogue 11. 20 foreign visitors. What are you giving your foreign visitors on Wednesday evening, Winnie? How many? Twelve, is it? Twenty. Twelve of William's Swedish representatives. Eight of them with wives. And what will you feed them on? Well, we'll start with watercress soup, then fish in a white wine sauce flavoured with fennel and chives, followed by stuffed veal served with cauliflower and, oh, a very wide variety of vegetables. Mmm, my mouth's watering. For sweet, we'll have fresh fruit souffle covered with walnuts. And lots of whipped cream, of course, and vanilla wafers. And we'll finish with devil's soft rose. And finally, coffee. What a feast! I wish I was going to be with you. Dialogue 12. Comfort, Culture or Adventure? Going anywhere different for your vacation, Teresa? Ah, that's a million-dollar question, Christopher. Perhaps you can provide us with a decision. Edward demands his creature comforts. Proper heating, constant hot water, comfortable beds, colour television. What about you, Teresa? Or aren't you too particular? Normally, yes. And usually we combine the open air and exercise with a bit of culture. Last year, for instance, we covered the Cheltenham Festival. The year before, it was Edinburgh. Edward adores Scotland. You fortunate characters! You complaining? No, but I long to go further afield. Something more dangerous, and where the temperature's hotter. I wonder if this would interest you. It arrived today. A specialised tour of Southern America for photographers. Canoeing up the Amazon. Alligators and other hazardous adventures. Christopher, how marvellous! It sounds wonderful! No creature comforts for Edward. Separate holidays are an excellent idea. Occasionally. Edward can go to Scotland alone. I'm terribly bad at names, but I never forget a face. Aren't you a friend of the Joneses, James and Isabel Jones? No. Oh, have I made you miss your bus? I'm so sorry, but I'm... Have hair like that? Elise, it's brilliant green. A women can dye their hair blue. There are plenty who paint their nails red. That's not the same at all. They only stress what nature meant. Green is... Green is... I cannot find the words. Unnatural, is that what you mean? An appendix operation is too. And as for transplanting a heart, and I love all my emerald hair. What does Peter think? Oh, Christopher, didn't you know why his hair is purple and red? <laughs> Dialogue 14. A Sweet Siamese Student That Siamese student seems a nice sort of person. Yes, serious, sensible, a bit insecure, perhaps. Eldest of six, the rest still at school. I see her sister sometimes. I saw her yesterday. Soft skin, silky voice, sleepy eyes, sort of slow, sexy smile. Sounds like Sue Sang. Yes, that's it. Sue sang, she's so sweet. Waxing ecstatic, Stan. I may say I strongly disapprove of senior staff taking fancies to innocent students. You're supposed to be embracing serious linguistic research, not soft-skinned students. Most unsuitable. 
and silly when you're just starting to make a success of this place. For goodness sake, Sam, who says I'm smitten? The kid's sweet, but still only twenty-six. I shall be sixty in September. Dialogue 15. The zoology exams on Thursday. How's things these days, Lizzie? I'm exhausted. Revising for the zoology exam. You've got bags under your eyes, Lizzie. Take it easy. It's all very well for you to advise, Ezra, but I'm going crazy. One of those miserable Xeno boys, two houses down, plays his transistor as if he was as far away as Mars. Boys will be boys. These days, everyone plays transistors. But he refuses to close the windows. Then close your ears to the noise, Lizzie. One learns to ignore these things, as if they didn't exist. Please, Ezra, the exam's on Thursday. And today's Tuesday. That only leaves two days. You better get busy, Lizzie. Dialogue 16. Are you sure you said sheep? Trisha, come and I'll show you my sheep. Your sheep? Sheila, what sheep? My sheep. Are you sure you said sheep? Shh, don't shout. Of course I'm sure I said sheep. She's here in the shed. Isn't she sweet? She was washed up on the shore at Shale Marsh. What a shame! Is it unconscious? She's a she. I shall call her Sheba. I should think she's suffering from shock. Do you think she was pushed off that Persian ship? Oh, Sheila, she's shivering. My precious. She shall have a soft cushion and my cashmere shawl. She's rather special, isn't she? Sheila, I wish... Oh, I do wish we could... Share, huh? Dialogue 17. The Great Decision. I have made a great decision, Jean. I have bought a television. You? Jacques, on how many occasions have you told me that television was an intrusion into the privacy of the house, that it destroyed the pleasures of conversation, that people no longer know how to make use of their leisure? I know, I know, and it's unusual for me to suffer a revision of thought. But on this occasion... Where is this treasure? Hidden in the garage. Please make no allusion to it. I shall tell the family casually, as if there were nothing unusual in my buying a television. After years of derision, I hope you will not be disillusioned by your television. Dialogue 18. Life is a question of choice or chance. If you could recapture your childhood, Richard, would you change much? Life is a sort of arch, arrival to departure. You can't switch direction, Charles. Each century brings changes, but actually nature doesn't change. But you can reach different decisions. With television, you can choose which channel to watch, switch to another picture. You could catch a different train. Given the chance, Richard, would you change trains? Life is a rich adventure and largely a question of chance. You don't choose your future as you choose a chocolate or a piece of cheese. 
But which did you do choose? You forge your own fortune. A butcher? Chellies? A teacher? A merchant? Each choice suggests a further choice. Which tree? Which branch? Which twig? Let's adjourn to the kitchen for chicken and chips. No choice for lunch, you see, Charles. But you actually chose chicken and chips. Chops would have been much cheaper. Dialogue 19. George's Jaw Ah, George, jolly good. Just exchange your jacket and jeans for these pyjamas while I jot down your injuries in my register. Age, religion, that's the usual procedure. Well, Dr. Jones, I was just driving over the bridge on the edge of the village. Half a jiffy, let's adjourn to the surgery. I've got a large sandwich and a jar of orange juice in the fridge. Join me. Jeepers. My indigestion. And my jaw. I shan't manage. A generous measure of gin. Just the job. It's my jaw, Doctor. I was on the bridge at the edge of the village. I was just adjusting the engine when this soldier jumped out of the hedge. Imagine! He damaged your jaw, did he? I suggest an injection into the joint. Just a jiffy. I'll change the syringe. Oh, jeepers. Gently, Dr. Jones. Dialogue 20. A job in Aberdeen. Hello, Anthony. Got a job yet? Well, I've just been up to Aylesbury for an interview. Oh? Was it interesting? Yes, an international oil company with interests in most of the eastern countries. Someone to organise an office they're opening up in Aberdeen. I imagine you'll have to brush up your Arabic again. Oh, I can express myself in Arabic all right. And I understand most other Middle Eastern languages. It's an exciting opportunity. They actually offered it to me outright. If I may express an unbiased opinion. Sorry, Eric. I've already accepted. <laughs>